Good evening. I want to welcome you tonight to our Facebook Live broadcast on this Wednesday evening. And I just want to let you know that we are going to have a phenomenal uh, teaching tonight, I believe, about a very pertinent subject in our culture today. And I want to talk to you about why isn't life fair? In just a few moments, we're going to discuss the issue of this a uh, man by the name of George Floyd. If you've been following the news, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, I hope this video finds you okay. Uh, this broadcast finds you doing well in your home. And and uh, thank you for joining us. We are so grateful for your presence here. And uh, thank you for sticking with us at Fountain of Life. Listen, we are pumped. We are excited. We had our first service last Sunday. Man, did it ever feel good to be back together you know i not to just to hug everybody but you know just to physically see people was incredible and uh so so that was good i think that we can actually hold our church services in a very safe and secure way and so we are pumped about that if you need more information about that you can go onto our website folcc.org and uh, you can uh, see how we're going about that uh, by clicking on one of the uh, on on the, the the policies that we have in the reopening of our church there, but anyway, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Can I just pray for you today? Pray for our church before we jump into this tonight. Heavenly Father, I just pray God for everyone who's watching, everyone who's listening today. God, as people are are gathering and joining this here, uh, this 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 Facebook Live broadcast, Lord, I pray that. You would take the words that I say tonight and that you would make them real and powerful and interesting. And Lord, I pray for people, Lord, who have felt injustice in their life, who have felt that life hasn't treated them fairly. And I pray that you would give them a sense of peace about that. Lord, let them put their hope and trust fully in you tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd keep everybody safe and, and employed and, and secure, walking in you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that nothing would be able to steal the joy that we have from you, Lord. I pray for joy in our families. I pray that there'd be laughter around kitchen tables and and uh, joy and happiness and peace everywhere, Lord, in our families, in our homes, in our marriages. And I, I bless the people of Fountain of Life, God, and I pray that you bless them, Lord, with jobs and with health and prosperity and success and all of those good things that come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, thank you for joining us tonight. Listen, I want you to grab your Bible, okay? Make sure when you join us, you have your Bible. You may want to grab a pen and paper as well. Um, I've got myself a giant cup of coffee here tonight anyway. So we're going to be enjoying this here together. Uh, so anyway, so if you have your Bibles, we're going to mostly be in the book of Ecclesiastes tonight. Ecclesiastes. And uh, I, I want to talk to you about why isn't life fair? You know, that is a question that a lot of people have asked. And unfortunately, some people have even left the faith because they felt like God wasn't fair somehow. And, and I want to discuss all of those things, and I want to tell you that life isn't fair. It's not fair. Uh, unfortunately, there's still racism in our country. There's still police brutality in our country. Uh, I don't quite understand uh, this situation in Minneapolis. To tell you the truth, I'm, I'm a little bit furious about it. Just watching just a portion of a video just infuriates me. Why does a police officer have to have his 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 knee on the neck of somebody who's handcuffed, unarmed, laying on the ground, motionless, who's saying, I can't breathe? These things bother me greatly. I want to tell you, this is an injustice. It's not fair. I'm talking about the case of a man by the name of George Floyd who uh, recently died under police, you know, uh, custody in Minneapolis. I understand that four officers who were involved in that scene were actually fired from their job. Uh, you know, they something more needs to happen than that they just get fired. Uh, to me, that was a criminal act. And uh, anyway, I, I'm I'm upset about it, and uh, you probably are too. But anyway, uh, so I want to talk about. Life is 
that life is not fair. Interestingly enough, a man by the name of Solomon asked the same questions in his day that we're asking today. Uh, let me read to you from Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse number 1. I'm going to switch from some modern versions to some, uh, you know, for some more traditional versions tonight. But, but anyway, let me read to you out of the good news version. It says, I looked again at all the injustice that goes on in this world. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. You watch television, you say, here I am looking again at the injustice that goes on in this world. The New International Version says, Again I looked and I saw all the oppression that was taking place underneath the sun. And so there's a lot of uh, oppression and injustice and, and unfairness in our world today. And uh, the question of, an inj of injustice can be asked in many, many different ways because it touches many lives. We ask questions like this, Why do bad things happen to good people? And why do why do bad people seem to prosper? And how about this one? Where is God when I hurt? What when all the things of life aren't fair and, and, and just in life? You know, where's God during that period of time? If if God is really God and He can do something and He's loving, where is He and what is He doing and why doesn't He help us? Why doesn't He do something about the injustice in the world? And uh, if you're like me, you're, you, you, you know, after watching just one more, you know, African-American man being, you know, hurt and harmed like that, you know, you just kind of like you're saying enough already, you know. But so tonight I want to talk about the reality of injustice. All right. I want to talk about the reasons for injustice. And then I want to talk about our response. What is it that we should be doing about it? And so, first of all, let's look a bit at, uh, through Solomon's eyes, through the Word of God, let's look at the reality, uh, and the reality is that life just isn't fair. It's not fair, and that's a fact, and we have to accept that as a part of life, that life isn't fair. The Bible even says it. Life is not fair. In fact, the book of Ecclesiastes and Solomon in his wisdom gives us five different examples how life is unfair. First of all, criminals go unpunished. Uh, this police officer, you know, he, he should be tried. You know, I, that's what I think. Uh, but oftentimes, you know, criminals go unpunished. And I'm not just talking about, you know, police officers who cross the line here. I'm talking about regular old-fashioned criminals, you know. Uh, there's a criminal out there who stole our trailer at the church, our Royal Ranger trailer. Guess what? To my knowledge, that person has never been caught and punished for stealing our trailer. Uh, so recently in December, someone broke into the back of our church, smashing out a door, costing us, you know, hundreds of dollars at the church. Uh, so criminals go unpunished. You know, Solomon saw this, and... Uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11 in the Good News Version, this is what it says. Uh, it says, why do people commit crimes? Because crime is not punished quickly enough. Let me read that to you out of the New International Version, Ecclesiastes 8 11. Hope you're following along with me today, jotting some of this down with a pen and paper. It says, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. 3,000 years ago, Solomon was complaining about what we're complaining about today. The courts are bogged down. Justice is slow. And delayed justice for us doesn't, it just seems like injustice. You know, and there are a lot of people who say, you know, crime doesn't pay. Well, who says it doesn't pay? You know, even even if you get uh, get caught, you know, you know, some people have sold their story for some movie rights and made millions of dollars. You know, for somebody. Uh, so so Solomon says it doesn't seem fair that criminals go unpunished. I mean, how relevant can that get? I mean, if there's any place that there ought to be justice in our world, 
It ought to be in the court system of the United States of America, right? But even there, you don't get justice. Often the verdict is not a, a matter of whether you're guilty or innocent, but uh, rather, do you have enough bucks to be able to get a really smart attorney to get you off on some kind of technicality, uh, you know? Uh, and then what happens is people get paroled sometimes, who and, and they can go out and they do it again. And so, so life is not fair, you know. Uh, then uh, Solomon gives another reason why life is unfair. Not only do criminals go unpunished, but also the oppressed are unhelped. Nobody seems to speak up for them. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4 and verse number 1 in the Good News Version says, Then I looked again at all the injustice that goes on in this world. The oppressed were crying and no one would help them. Their oppressors had power on their side. Ecclesiastes 4, one of the New International Version says, Then I returned and considered all the oppression that's done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of the, their oppressors, there is power, but they have no comforter. You know, the sad but true and very unfair fact of our world is that history is simply a record that proves that, ten, that human beings tend to persecute each other. It's our nature to oppress each other. Throughout history, the rich have oppressed the poor. The powerful oppress the powerless. One race oppresses another race. You know, uh, white oppresses black. Men have oppressed women. And all around our world, if we open up our eyes, we can see racism and sexism and oppression taking place. And it, and it hasn't changed today. Here, Solomon was talking about this. There we are 3,000 years later. We're dealing with the same stuff, right? And, and uh, you know, people oppress each other. And it doesn't seem fair because nobody speaks up for them. Uh, even Christians are oppressed and persecuted, especially even now. I understand that in China, there's a huge crackdown against uh, Christianity. And many people are suffering and being oppressed and persecuted. And uh, th that's unjust. It's unfair for God's people, good Christian people, to be oppressed. Uh, and then another reason why uh, life is unfair is because politicians are unethical. Uh, okay, if you haven't discovered that yet, you know, I, I hate to bring that to you, but but I don't care what, you know, it, on both sides, Democrats, Republicans, you know, there's un, people that are unethical. You know, there's a lot of cheating that goes on in politics and lying and mudslinging. Truth doesn't seem to be what's important anymore. People change their points and they change their positions on different things according to the situations. Politicians are unethical, okay? And that's not to say that there's not any, any good politicians, but you know what I'm saying. All right, so whenever you find people in authority over others, you're going to find some injustice. Does anybody really expect for public service to service? You know, I guess I've lost hope. I guess I'm becoming a little bit of a cynic. I guess I've become a little bit like, like, like Solomon. This is what Solomon had to say about it. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse number 8. Let me read it to you from the New King James Version tonight. It says, If you see the oppression of the poor and the violent perversion of justice and righteousness in a province, or we could say in a state or a city or a town or what have you, it says, Do not marvel at the matter, for high officials watch over high official." And higher officials are over them. Wow. I, I think Solomon saw all of this. He saw that when people gain political power and authority, it kind of, you know, pr produces corruption. Someone said there's nothing, you know, that, that cor absolutely corrupts like absolute authority. Uh, Ecclesiastes five, 10 verses 5 and 6 says this, let me read it to you from the Good News verse. It says, here is an injustice I, ha I have seen, an injustice caused by rulers. And this is why I love some of these more modern versions, right? 
It says stupid position, stupid people are given positions of authority. I don't know, have you ever been watching the news and that's what you thought? How did this stupid person get in this position of authority? Solomon even thought that. This is how he says it. It says it's this translated in the New King James Version. It says, There's an evil I have seen under the sun, the sort of error that arises from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions while the rich occupy the low ones. So while intelligent people sometimes go unknown, dumb people rule us. So let me tell you what, life isn't fair, right? I'm trying to make a point for that case, all right? Another reason why life isn't fair, because good people are unrewarded. And uh, the wrong people seem to be prospering sometimes, you know. Gang members prosper. Abortion doctors, you know, live in wonderful houses and drive incredible cars. You know, scandalous men who have been unscrupulous in their dealings, in their personal life. They've had multiple affairs, and yet it just seems like life goes well for them. They make a lot of money. There's drug lords who who live, and they never worry about any kind of a money situation, while hardworking people who are honest people sometimes don't even have the money they need to go to the doctor or go to the dentist. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, life is unfair. That's what I'm trying to say today. Ecclesiastes 8.14, let me read it from the New International Version today. It says this, it says, There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. The righteous who get what the wicked deserve and the wicked who get what the righteous deserve. This too, I say, is meaningless. How crazy is it that it's the dishonest people who are the ones that are getting ahead? I mean, it kind of sometimes appears that the wicked are better off, that they're having more fun. It appears that the way to get ahead in, in business is to be unscrupulous, to have no integrity. That's unfair. I wonder today, if you're watching this, maybe have you ever lost a deal or a sale or a contract because of an unscrupulous competitor and, and you deserved the contract, but you didn't get it? Uh, but, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, and Solomon, what he says here says that life doesn't seem fair, you know, uh, even in, in the church world, you know, it seems like. Those churches that don't preach the whole truth, that don't say, you know, sin is sin and hell is hot and you need to live righteously. You know, sometimes those churches are more, seem to be have more financial blessing than churches that stick to the truth. I'm just saying. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7 to 15 of the Living Bible, this is a paraphrase, but it says this. It says, the good die young, and it seems that the evil people live on and on. Wow. Uh, in the New King James Version, Ecclesiastes 7 to 15 says this. In this meaningless life of mine, I have seen both of these, the righteous perishing in their righteousness and the wicked living long in their wickedness. And so life is unfair. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what Solomon discovered. There's a lot of injustices in our world today. Then he goes on to give the fifth reason. He says, uh, because capable people are sometimes unsuccessful. The good guys don't always win, okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says this, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Uh, let me just kind of break that down in the Good News Version here tonight. The Good News Version of Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, In this world, fast runners do not always win the races. You know, that's true. People have trained for years and years to get into the Olympics. And sometimes on that day, they get sick, they have a fluke accident, and they get disqualified. Man, that's not fair. They were they're fast. They trained hard. They should have won, but they didn't. It goes on to say, wise men don't always earn a living. That's true. You can be brilliant and still be a poor 
person. While some fool, you know, just inherits millions just because daddy o was rich o. You know, uh, you you work hard. Uh, some people work hard, making make a living, paying all their house payments, paying their mortgage, and then yet, and yet there's some drug smuggler who's living in a paid off mansion. And, you know that just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem just. Uh, it goes on to say, intelligent men don't always get rich. You know how many of you know the biggest salaries don't always go to the smartest people. You know, why is it that we pay professional athletes, including boxers and others, you know, uh, more than the president of the United States makes in a year? I mean, it's crazy, right? Uh, so, so, so life is unfair and, you know, life is unjust. You know, why is it that guys who are dropouts from school, you know, who never studied, you know, are rappers and they're making millions of dollars or some type of an artist. If you have some bizarre, crazy, weird lifestyle, you get invited on some talk show and make hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Life isn't fair or just. And this, uh, the scripture goes on here in the Good News Version of Ecclesiastes 9.11. It says, capable men aren't always, don't always rise to high positions. That's true. And it's the same is true with capable women. You know, I know some women who are far more capable than their bosses, yet there's this glass ceiling they just can't seem to get above and beyond. And, you know, maybe you deserve the promotion, but you didn't get it. Maybe because of the color of your skin or your gender or, or the boss like somebody else, he promoted his nephew, you know. The best qualified don't always get the position. That's what I'm saying. Life is not fair. And Solomon here is really, in these scriptures in Ecclesiastes, he's just giving examples of that. Examples that you and I see every day if our eyes are open and we are looking at the world. Life isn't fair. So let's just admit it. Life is not fair. And so the question is, why doesn't God do something about it? And is God caring? You know, is he just indifferent to all of this? Is he helpless? And I, I tell you, I have actually counseled and have known people who have came upon an injustice in their life and they couldn't seem to reconcile that with their faith in God. And so they've actually left their faith in God and just given up on all of that. And, uh, you know, this, this is a very important issue that, that we're looking at, to, at, at, tonight, at tonight. I don't want anybody that I pastor to give up on their faith, right, because of the injustices that are out there in the world. And so I want to give you tonight four powerful reasons why God is allowing injustice in the world, all right? These are four biblical uh, theological reasons why God allows there to be injustice in the world. And I want you to know that there definitely is injustice in our world. First of all, here's the first reason why God allows injustice. Number one, because he gives us the freedom to choose. And I've often said and I've taught and I've preached that, you know, the highest value that God must have is the freedom of choice. God wanted uh, to create humanity in the sense that they had the option. They had the the right to choose to follow him or to not follow him. Deuteronomy 11 and verse 26, he, he says, God says, I'm giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. The New International Version says, I'm setting today before you a blessing and a curse. You choose. Uh, the scripture also goes on to say, choose this day whom you will serve, you know. And, and the truth is, you and I were created in God's image. How beautiful is that? And so what that means is that God gave us a choice. That's what makes us different from the animals. Animals don't have a choice. They do what they do largely by instinct. But God gave you a choice to either accept him or to reject him to deny him or to follow him and obey him, to do good or to do bad, to do what's right or do what's evil. God gives you a free choice because he wants you to do good because you choose to do so. 
not because you're forced to or you have to do so, because you're kind of a robot or an automaton that doesn't have a choice. He wants you to love him because you choose to love him, not because you have to. And with choices, of course, you know, come consequences. You can't say hey, you have a choice to do good unless you also have a choice to do what's bad. And the good news is that you have the freedom to choose. But the bad news is that there are negative consequences to that because people often make bad decisions. Evil consequences in the world, the injustices in the world, the unfair things in the world are often simply a result of evil choices that people have made. Uh, this injustice that we're looking at with George Floyd is the result of a choice that an evil person made, and uh, it's unfair, right? You know, uh, he, he made a choice. The man's lying on the ground. He's saying, I can't breathe. He should have taken his knee off of his neck, off of the man's neck, right? It was an evil choice that he made, and that caused an unfair situation. Now, I want you to know that God could take away all of the injustices in the world in a snap. But if he, in order to do that, he would be taking away your freedom to choose to do wrong and also to take away your freedom to choose to do what is right. And the truth is that God is not going to do that because his highest value is the freedom of choice. And he wants you to choose him and he wants you to choose to do what is right. So the good news is that you do have freedom, but the bad news is that there are negative consequences as a result of that, and one of those consequences is injustice in our world. Okay, so why does God allow injustice in the world? First of all, because he gives us the freedom to choose. And secondly, he allows injustice because judgment is coming. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 17 says this, In due season, God will judge everything man does both good and bad. You know, people ask the question, well, what if this police officer gets away with this? You know, that would be a terrible injustice. I've got news for you. He won't get away with it. Even if he gets away with it in the courts on, in, on earth, there's another higher court that's in heaven. Ecclesiastes 3.17 in the New International Version, the Solomon said, I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. Here's the truth. Today is not the end of the story. The final chapter has not been written, all right? You need to never forget that one day God is going to balance the books. If you have been a person that has suffered injustice, if you look at life and say, man, that was not fair, what they did to me, how I was treated, what happened to me, how my parents did, whatever. If you're looking at your life through those lenses, you've got to realize that judgment is coming, right? There is a, you know, just because people seem to be getting away with it now, it doesn't mean that they're going to get away with it forever. You know, it's inevitable. And, and, and we need to constantly remember that ultimately there's going to be a day of accounting, not just for those who've harmed us, but for everyone, including us, to give an account for everything we did on the earth. It's coming one day. Uh, Isaiah 30 and verse uh, 18 says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. Notice what it says, For the Lord is a God of justice. Our God is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Uh, he demands justice. And uh, the truth is that God is far fairer than you or I are, okay? Because he's a God of justice. One day, he's going to settle the score. He's going to close the books. He's going to balance all the accounts out. And if I didn't believe that, man, I would be in absolute despair because there's a lot of people out there in our world, man, they are getting away with a lot of stuff. But 
the judgment that God has has not yet been meted out. And God says, yes, you've been given free choice, and yes, you can do good or bad, but one day you're going to have to give an account for your life. And so the question becomes then, well, why doesn't God judge us, you know, right now? You know, why doesn't he bring judges justice immediately? Why doesn't he balance the books today? i never forget a conversation I had with a, a few years ago with a man. And this guy, man, he was living a simple lifestyle, kind of faking and pretending like he was a Christian. He was out there doing things he knew was wrong, and he was talking about that to me. And he said, you know, it just seems like God doesn't care if I do what's wrong. He never judges me. He told me, he said, I get away with all kinds of things over and over and over again. He said, and I still am blessed. My business keeps prospering, he told me. I told him, look, man, you, you, you need to be wary of that, uh, you know, because one day judgment will come. Amen. But why doesn't he judge us now? I'm going to tell you why he doesn't judge us now and why he allows injustices in the world. Because he, he wants to show us that we need a savior okay that's the third reason why god allows injustice because he wants to show us we need a savior ecclesiastes 7 and verse 20 in the new international version says this indeed there is no one on earth who is righteous no one who does what is right and never sins and i'm going to tell you that's true for me, for Bob Millsaps, all right? I, I have sinned. I am a sinner, okay? And uh, guess what? If you're watching this video today and you're breathing and you're alive, you also, according to God's word, are a sinner, right? We've not all, we're not all completely righteous, right? And so what does that mean? That means in a real sense that we're all in trouble. We've all been unkind at times. We've all been cruel. We've, we've all been unfair to others. We're all kind of in the same boat. And the, the reason why the world is unjust is because it's full of unjust people. People like me. People like you, my friend. And so what we want to believe is that that we're unselfish and that we always think of other people. And so here's what happens. God tests us, right? He lets the world go on to see what the national, the natural consequences of our human nature are. Let me read this verse. It's incredible. It talks about God testing us in the book of Ecclesiastes 13. Three, excuse me, 3 and verse 18. Uh, in the New International Version, it says, I also said to myself, as for humans, oh, by the way, that's us, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Oh, wow, man. That's a tough verse, right? The, the Living Bible says, God is letting the world go on in its sinful way so we can test mankind so that men will see that they are no better than beasts. You know, he wants us to see what human nature is really like. He's saying that injustice reveals human nature. When you see stuff going on in the world, like uh, this uh, situation with George Floyd, you know, you know, we really, we, we, it, 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 what it shows us is that what human nature is actually like. And we shouldn't be surprised about it. It just shows us what mankind is really like on the inside. It just dis it, it dis demonstrates my our human nature. And here's the truth. Given the opportunity, if I'm honest with myself, I will think of me before I think of you. Given the opportunity, if you're honest with yourself, you will think of yourself before you think of anybody else because we are naturally self-centered people. And injustice just reveals human nature. Uh, you know, uh, he said uh, that they may see that they are like animals. Uh, what he's saying, he's saying that without God, we tend to act like we're animals. Normal people, given the right situation in a group, are capable of any kind of a thing and you and i are capable of anything given the right situation and p people tend to prey on each other they do it all the time they do it in business they act crazy they act wild and evolution comes along and says you know hey we shouldn't be surprised at this because you know man 
man's just an animal anyway. You know, if you came from slime and you're just a complex ooze that's out there evolutionary-wise speaking, then why not just act like an animal? But here's what God says. God says, no, you're not an animal. Sometimes you may act like one if I'm not in your life. Uh, but, 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 but God wants us to see that we need a Savior. And, uh, and uh, the humanist says that man basically uh, is good and always does the right thing. That's what humanism says. But uh, that, that, that can't be right. Humanism is, is really a, a lie. Humankind is not getting better and better. If that's true, how do you explain Auschwitz and the killing fields and the rapes and the murders and the abuse that goes on in our society? All of these things point us, points me, points you to the fact that we need a Savior. All of mankind needs a Savior and 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 uh, we have to cho- we have the freedom to choose there's going to be a judgment one day for our choices but god in his mercy and grace delays that judgment so that you and i can recognize our need for a savior before that day comes uh, uh, you know the romans 3:23 and verse 24 says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god that's so true of all of us every one of us have have have, have done things that have caused unfair situations in life but it also goes on to say, and all are justified freely by his grace to the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Ben, I'll tell you what, I'm so grateful for Jesus. We need a savior, uh, not justice in our personal lives. We're all in the same boat. None of us are perfect. And, uh, you know, is it right to clamor for justice for a man by the name of George Floyd? Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, are we certain that we want justice for everybody, including ourselves? Probably not, right? If God gave you what you deserve right now, where would you be? I know where I would be. I deserve to be in hell right now. Uh, But Jesus took care of that. You know, he didn't deserve to go to the cross. He was perfect. He was sinless. He was God. But the Bible says that he came and died, took the penalty for you and me the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Oh, what a wonderful Savior that we have. He took my penalty, my price. He did my jail sentence and yours too. And uh, we need to accept him as Savior. Then another reason why God allows justice and injustice in the world is that pain can develop character. Romans 5 uh, verse 3 and 4 says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, Because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Here's the truth. You always learn more from pain than you do from pleasure. Isn't that true? You always learn more from failure than you do from success. It's in the tough times that you develop character, not the easy times. I can tell you that it's in the moments of my life when I went through testings and trials, when I thought life was unfair too towards me, that I grew, that I found maturity in my life. And so pain also can develop character within us. And so, uh, you know, rather than grow bitter, you know, that's an important key right there. Rather than grow bitter and angry, rather than raise your fist to God and say, life is unfair, why don't we instead learn character, that character of suffering that comes that says, you know, the whole world is suffering. Christ suffered. I can suffer too. But uh, learn how to uh, maintain that, that, that spirit of, 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 of love in life. And so, so, so what do you do? What do you do then? You know, I'm going to kind of close with this. What do you do when you've been dealt a really bad hand? And, and, and maybe you're facing that right now. Something's happened. You don't deserve it. You feel like life is unfair. There's three things you can do, okay, when, 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 we, when life is unfair. First of all, when you've been dealt a hand you didn't deserve, just accept that life is unfair. You know, you need to accept it. Quit trying to ignore it. It's a fact. John 16, 33 said this, Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have troubles and tribulations. He was realistic about life. In this world, you're going to have troubles, all right? Even, and, 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 and the fact is this, even if you spent 
every single waking moment of your life, trying to crusade against every injustice and trying to correct all the wrongs of our society. And don't get me wrong, I admire people who do that. I admire people who march against injustice, post up good Facebook say, you know, posts about injustice. These are right things, and we should do that. But even if you spent your entire life and hundreds and millions of people spent their lives trying to crusade against injustice, guess what would happen? The world would still have injustices. You're not going to save society. Here's the reason why. Because... The issue is deeper than just the system, right? The problem is human nature. Basically, we're selfish. Basically, human nature is sinful. We think of others before we think of ourselves. And people are going to continue to choose to do wrong and to do evil in our world. And so we're going to just have to realize that we can't change society. We can't change the people who've hurt us. No, no. We have to just accept that sometimes life is going to be an unfair. But uh, don't allow that bitterness, that root of bitterness to get down on the inside and destroy your life. And then secondly, not only accept that life is unfair, but do the right thing. Do the right thing anyway. Isaiah 1 and verse 17 says this. Let me read it from the New International Version. It says, learn to do right. Seek justice defend the oppressed. All these things are correct and biblical and scriptural things that Christians ought to do. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. And so what it's saying here is even when the world is messed up and unfair and wrong, you have to maintain your own integrity. You do the right thing anyway. Do what you can to do, uh, to gain justice for others. And certainly we ought to fight for civil rights, fight for the oppressed, seek to caress the wrongs and injustice, injustices in life. Do what you can while you can. I love Proverbs 29 and 7 in the International Version. It says, the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. If we're, if we're the righteous, if we're right with God, living rightly in our world, we care about justice, right? Uh, so what do we do? Don't, Romans 12 tells us, don't be overcome with evil but overcome evil with good. Don't become revengeful. Don't become resentful. Don't retaliate. Don't take matters into your own hands. Let God deal with things. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. And he can do a better job than you can, right? Uh, do the right thing anyway. And then you need to take the long-term look, turn, term look. You need to be willing to wait for God's reward, right? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17 says, These temporary troubles are winning for us a permanent reward out of all proportion to our pain. The New International Version, let me read it. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Listen, God is faithful God is going to reward you for doing the right thing anyway, the right response to the inequities of life. And Mark chapter 10 says he will reward you even up to 100-fold. Listen, one day God's going to wipe away every tear. He's going to balance the book, settle the score, even get even with all of the injustices in life. So the thing that we need to do is do the right thing and you'll be rewarded. These are just temporary troubles. The 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 years you live on this earth are short in comparison in the light of eternity. Keep your perspective straight. So how do I get those rewards in eternity? You've got to admit some things, all right? First of all, admit that you're just as unjust as others, <laughs> right? I, I, I've admitted that today as I've looked deeply into myself preparing this message. I need to ask forgiveness and say, God, you know, I, I'm not perfect, uh, you know, uh, but and I don't want to bring imperfection into a perfect heaven. But Lord, I'm trusting you to, to cleanse me, to take that all away from me. And uh, I, I thank the Lord that I've accepted Christ as my Savior. And then you've got to let God settle the scores of your life. Don't retaliate. Don't give evil for evil. Overcome evil with good. Don't get resentful. Don't get revenge. Let God handle it. 
And some of you may be going through a, a time right now where you're thinking, you know, it's just not fair. I didn't deserve this. Listen, everybody has their story of injustice. Everybody does. And we're not going to get a detailed explanation uh, for every detail of why things happen. And the truth is we, we don't need an explanation. This is what you just need to know. And I'm closing with this today. Here's what you need to know. God has your best interest at heart. I believe that. He really does. God is on your side. He has your best interest at heart. Secondly, he's given you the freedom of choice. So let's choose what is good, all right? Thirdly, uh, we're all going to be brought to judgment one day, including those who have oppressed us and mistreated us. And fourthly, if you respond in the right way, you're going to be rewarded for it. Listen, uh, I, this is a big topic today. But an important one. Life is unfair. But listen, we serve a God who is the God of justice. And we can trust him in these uncertain days. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray today for those who are watching this uh, live video, Facebook live broadcast. I pray that you would bless them, be with them, encourage them. Lift them up, oh God, today into your presence. Let them know that your mighty arms are around them. And Lord, I pray, God, that if they've suffered injustice like Job of old, you'd give them double for their trouble, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would right the wrongs in our world as much as possible, Lord. God, we trust in you, Lord. And God, I pray, God, for this situation, Lord, with this man, Lord, in Minneapolis. God, I pray, Lord, that violence wouldn't take place on our streets. But Lord, I do pray that justice would happen and justice would be served, God. In the precious name of Jesus, I honor you and I praise you for who you are. Hey, listen, I want to invite you to be in church this coming Sunday. Uh, if you don't feel like you can come, watch us on Facebook Live uh, at 1030 uh, on Sunday. But otherwise, we want to encourage you to be a part of our service uh, this Sunday at 1030. We're pumped and excited. I'm going to have a great message for you, I believe, out of the book of James, chapter 1. So listen. Be a part of that uh, service this coming Sunday. We love each and every one of you. God bless you.